Well, welcome back, everybody, and thank you for keeping to the time. We were running a little bit late, but I think we will be able to catch up and be ready for lunch. But before we run off for lunch, there is a group photograph. Nobody's allowed to eat anything until you make a photograph taken. And so the photographer is busy setting up. This is part of our digital history. Um, we have group photos of every meeting, so it's a good way of tracking what's happening. So just let so you're aware of that. So what we'll do is we'll, you'll take um, short feedback, kind of as a summary of the, the, you know, the points that were raised in your discussions, and we'll try and keep it uh, short, maybe to, 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 you know, a few or four minutes per group, uh, in terms of feedback, and of course, technology is doing what I want to do. So, John? <laughs> Okay, so shall we take uh, feedback from group one? I don't know who is the spokesperson <laughs> for group one. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I took the notes. I don't know if I'm the spokesperson, but I can read them and guess. Sure, yeah. Excellent spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what we came up with uh, was what the OAR is doing well, and what the OAR is doing well, and what the Bringing the SPART institutions together, collaborating rather than competing, was one of the things we thought was good. And being a lean organization, I think, was seen as a positive. Um, where can how, where how can the OER network improve? Is get the bloody MVP out the door. That was, I think, the tenor of the response. I don't think the word bloody was used. It was implied. But, but, um, and then, what are the top three priorities this partner meeting should address? One is pick a day for the OARU MVP launch and announce the launch date publicly to provide a bit of motivation. Two, identify the minimum team of partners required to launch the MVP. And three, uh, each of these, each of the partner representatives here should define the step-by-step -step process necessary to to process to success for each partner institution uh, in their participation. And that should that step by step process should then be undertaken after the meeting. Um, as far as the issues for the council of CEOs, um, it was just to allocate sufficient resources and smooth the way for the launch of for the launch on the date that we determined. And then there was also an additional idea uh, put forward that um, we look at possibly uh, approaching some of our friendly funding providers. Um, in, as far as uh, getting resources to properly uh, do a publicity splash for our launch. Is that right? Anyone have anything else to add from the group one? Are, are, you, are you happy with the an excellent report? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then uh, moving on to group two then. Uh, who is the rapporteur for group two? I did the note taking, but I would encourage anyone uh, to jump in because there, there were some points definitely that uh, were novel to me. In terms of what we're doing well, uh, everyone really, really liked Dave's presentation. And, and anyone who remembers where the tech was at uh, felt very, very pleased about that trajectory. Um, I mean, the fact is, too, if we look at where our offering, off, uh, offerings were not so long ago, I mean, the fact is we are producing courses and we really have done much more towards moving to a viable product. Marketing is another issue that people noted as having improved in the resource kits that have been developed, much more coherent messaging. Um, I, did, I finished typing that, but just the fact that, that you know, an organization, like, you know, things come and go and things shift so quickly. So the fact that there's been progress every year, people have been a part of this, uh, and there's still a sense of momentum uh, in itself is a really remarkable achievement. Uh, in terms of improvement, a lot of them are tied to the things we were doing well. So um, when, when we talked about things like the technology, um, something that we actually talked about in our working group is how could we assist partners who maybe want to start to use some of these tools in their local environment or just integrate the types of technologies that's used by OERU in their own technology. Um, and with regards to marketing materials, there was an interesting point just made 
for people that want to be champions within their institutions, uh, providing them with the tools to be more effective advocates in their own internal institutions. Um, uh, Robert, being a relative newcomer to OERU, uh, he said something that I, I hear all the time, actually, when I go to open ed conferences and stuff, where people go, yeah, you're with OERU, right? So what is that? Um, so there still is maybe some confusion and clarity about what OER is and how it's distinct from other offerings. So we have some decent materials for students on the website in terms of what a student gets out of being with it. But maybe we can develop guides like that that focus with people with specific roles, how they would engage with OERU. So there was an idea of almost like a how-to guide for a faculty member, a how-to guide for an administrator. Someone like that. Or even as a course rather than a guide. So, right. Yeah. So you see it from the point of view of the learner, that's your way in. Yeah. Excellent suggestion. Um, this is one actually I might ask a couple of the other people to speak on. The notion, because it was Robert used the phrase, um, you know, given that we're kind of going into quote unquote year one, at least with capital letters, um, are we thinking about research considerations downstream from external sources right now? Do you want to say anything about that? There was a couple of things that, that I mean, there was there was general discussion around this sort of thing and, and different sort of streams that you collect data from. So you have the learning analytics, you have the kind of annual survey, or you might something like that with some interviews and that kind of thing. But there's also the data that you could be collecting from the system if you look at your metadata model. So one one example we were talking about was how many hours went into producing this resource, this course. <laughs> Um, or how many days, or some measure, so that you could compare them. Do the ones that had more time put into them lead to different behaviors, different outcomes, that kind of thing. Um, and you could start kind of running some other metrics other than the ones that would just be the ones that are basically coming from Wikipedia, right? It's the log, sorry, the, the wiki. It's the log. It's who did what, who logged in when, what activity, what actions did they take. But there's other stuff that you want in your data model from a research point of view that would be really interesting. You know, um, so it's it's building that in so that from year one you're collecting that data right from the start. So that was one of our three priorities that we thought well, we we didn't really think of these as top three necessarily, but the three things that we didn't really see on the agenda that we almost thought might be worthy of consideration. Um, so there was that um, a, a question that kind of came up in a, in a tangible conversation was. Um, you know, one of the, I would almost put this one of the good things about the OERU is we aren't extremely dependent on external foundation funding. We run on a very lean model, and it's really grassroots effort that keeps it going. Um, so, but is that something that should change? And I think there are pros and cons to that, obviously. Uh, and then another one was I, 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 the person who actually raised the most aggressively is in the room at the moment. But uh, engaging with our students to gather feedback and really thinking them. Uh, as kind of more co-constructors and co-owners of what we're doing, whether it's student voices and how we plan and deliver things, but even like thinking of them as co-creators of some stuff. So I hadn't heard of Life Hack University, but it, it came up in the discussion. And you've got three points to which we'll uh, keep potential the CEOs. for the CEOs. Yeah, I mean, one was obviously, um, we're you know, talking about the cost effectiveness and cost models. Um, the role of the academic board with respect to evaluating our effectiveness. Um, and then I thought the, the one that I thought that was kind of interesting, and I might not have taken the note very well, but the last sentence I think captured it okay. Um, the idea that I think we do it right now, the, the role of the students when they come to us, it's almost like the role that you work with someone when you're a collaborator in an open source environment, which is cool. I mean, that's one of the things I think that's fun about that. But I think one of the things that does make OERU distinct is there is something like a path towards something that looks something like a credential. So um, how do we move people on that path from being essentially open source collaborators into something more like members of our university communities? Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I just would like to acknowledge uh, I'm from Holland, uh, Vice Chancellor here at UHI. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, group three. Okay, so uh, first of all, what the OERU is doing well, and I think there's lots of, uh, of, of very positive things here. Organizing, organizing the technology very well, the critical piece, the framework is, is, is really looking very good. 
It's bringing like-minded people together in 1936, my experience over the last four or five years now. Uh, it, it's a really strong community. This is only a small record of the sample here. A very strong uh, global community of like-minded people who want to get this thing happening. Uh, relentlessly open. They're relentlessly open and, and very committed to that concept. And I think we're all learning a lot about how to be open in this way. Wayne, you got some pretty big paths on your back, your method of working. Uh, it's been critical to the success of the whole enterprise to this point. Very methodical, and uh, you are a role model for all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, but you know, got the bus syndrome that we're going to have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> we need a succession plan. Not that I'm going to do it. We don't know. Uh, and we're doing a lot with very, very, very little resources. I mean, it's absolutely amazing how few resources are doing so much. Rather than get through the whole list of, of the improvements, I kind of tried to summarize them in the three points of the top three priorities. We can always look through those other ones in our own time. But one is, you know, we have to get past the proof of concept. I mean, that is something, if somebody, for people who have just come in recently, it's hard to see just from that first snapshot why it is what it is. You have to have a little bit of logic it makes more sense in terms of why what is there is there and then to form that fact and so two pieces uh, that, that really come out of that is one is a student connection it's a really good point of contact institutions uh, uh, some would like to say who are the students why can't we get to know them sooner why do we wait till they're finished uh, and then you know get to know them why can't we offer them more support services that we offer now? they're online students who are they do we want to market towards them uh, we did talk a little bit about the uh, business model canvas, where a lot of those discussions did happen internationally. Uh, uh, and so I would encourage people to, to look through that and see, I don't know, there's more details about those kinds of questions, right, uh, online, in terms of the thinking about student profiles, not being the students, but possibly uh, other NGOs, organizations, uh, industries, and so on. Um, and then the coherency of the program, uh, the structure at the moment, it is some, some, something of graphic courses. How do we move past that? Uh, part of that sort of grab bag idea, I think, was just in the end, just trying to get enough together so we could get a credential completed. Um, and so, uh, how do we? Uh, how can we move forward with a program that have a more uh, uh, coherent structure? There was a whole history about three years ago, or early on, we did have a large public consultation <coughs> as to what kind of programs might be appropriate, but it became very difficult to. <clears throat> to gather, develop, and put into the into the OERU the full range of courses that would support one particular credential. So we stayed with this more general studies degree at the moment, but uh, that was an idea that thought came up. So in terms of the issues to take to the council, program design, uh, learner support, and uh, challenges in understanding communications, it's always been a challenge. Uh, particularly if you come in more recently, getting uh, emails, getting the different uh, types of communications that come in, and trying to work back from that and get the big picture. Uh, those are challenges. So my apologies to group three if I missed things. We, we had a very broad and interesting discussion. We'll try to boil that down somewhat. So I encourage anybody to jump in if I missed a really important part of that group discussion. Thanks for that, Kevin. And, and just by way of process, all of this input actually goes into the final reporting. And so it's all captured. Um, Group, group four, does anyone want to report on that or should I just. Uh, anyone from group four want to report back? All right, I'll quickly summarize uh, the notes I took. Uh, things that we're doing well uh, the whole transnational qualification framework and figuring out how these different course sizes work internationally was mentioned as one, you know, one of the things we're doing well. The whole sort of open values piece we, we thought was you know uh, an important rallying point for the network and uh, and has served us well to date uh, the fact that we are progressing product for mvp uh, the fact that we will have sufficient courses at least for a first year of study <coughs> into an excellent award uh, the work that we're doing in developing templates for partner institutions to be able to adopt some of the open technologies we're using was cited as a, a you know, a good thing. Um, the international collaboration on course design and development. Many of our course development uh, developments have uh, <coughs> contributors from you know, different regions, different parts of the world, working on the same course. Um, the fact that our model 
creates possibilities for improved contextualization or cited as you know, something we are kind of doing well. Uh, there are, of course, always a number of areas where we can improve. And I thank Mustafa for, for raising this because I do think it's a, a, a very important issue. Is the whole representation of the network, if, you know, if you're looking at the geographical distribution, I mean, for example, we only have one partner from the Middle East. And so the thinking is we, we need to start thinking about how do we as a network improve better representation and global distribution uh, in terms of how we're moving forward. <coughs> We have to really get focused on uh, confirming the credit transfer protocols within our own institutions. The devil's going to be, be in the detail, right? And we're going to have to focus on this this year to, uh, to, you know, to kind of get that right. Um, how, how does OBRU go about improving the student experience? How can we do a better job of you know, kind of communicating the executive summary of what this OBRU is and its benefits to potential partners and, and students? And again, I think this point has been covered by a number of groups, improving our program of study, uh, you know, that we get a little bit more thought into the kinds of courses we're developing and the pathways we are creating to, uh, to different credentials. Uh, in no specific order, a couple of priorities and really open questions. What can we collectively do to implement the assessment of credit transfer at the different partner institutions within the network? Uh, what can the network do to improve uh, partner in, uh, in, uh, recruitment? I mean, in other words, how can partners help us in recruiting more partners uh, to improve our global uh, uh, representation? And uh, again, uh, this is the issue of you know what can we do to improve the communications about you know what this thing is and what you know, the benefits are for individual partner institutions. And our group knew that the other groups would cover the points that need to be covered by this. CEO's group, and that's why we don't have anything there. <laughs> so, uh, anyone from group four, is that a, a fair summary? <clears throat> okay, and so I, I, I noticed uh, part of the interesting challenge with this meeting is the majority of our partners are in a very awkward time zone. So, um, not many contributions, or in fact, in this session, we didn't have any contributions from remote participants. Uh, directly in, on the ether pad. <coughs> but the important thing with the OBRU is always having an open opportunity for people to be able to contribute. And I suggest we adjourn, and nobody's allowed to eat anything until you've had your photo taken. The photographer is setting up just around the corner there, so I appreciate you within the next 30 seconds. You are all ready for <laughs> Wait, wait, can I, can I start wrong? First of all, can I welcome everybody uh, to the University of the, the Highlands and to Inverness. Apologies that I wasn't here this morning. I've just come off from Edinburgh and I have to race off and see the University of Lawyers shortly as well now. Um, I was hoping to be there this afternoon, but I can't, it's got tied up in, so I'm hoping to see people later on this evening. Okay. And then tomorrow for a bit tomorrow, I'll have to pop in the night tomorrow if we've got things done. But I just wanted to say welcome and it's great to see, it's great to see some old faces. Some very old faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't aged a bit since last year. So just say welcome, welcome to the Highlands, and you brought the weather with you as well. So are you ready for the photograph? Yes, we're ready for the photograph, and, and, and from our side, you know, thanks for sharing the beautiful city with us. It, uh, this is really the only place you can share. Which you can find through GC. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so we're going to take the photo, and what we'll do is um, we'll reconvene uh, after lunch. We, uh, we're, we're quite fortunate that clients are unable to be here, so we get extra lunch time. So we reconvene at 2 o'clock. So thanks for that, Clive. Yeah, really appreciate it. I don't care very much, though. It's free. Okay. Now, then, <laughs> your video uh, <laughs> <laughs>